Welcome to the Texas Medical Center and in particular to the Methodist Hospital Research Institute. And our research institute coordinates and performs research for and across the entire spectrum of Methodist Hospital institutions. We are a very translational institute. Our focus is to develop innovative solutions to the most important medical problems. We have within this institute a full department of nanomedicine. Now, we are focused on bringing nanomedicine-based, nanotechnology-based solution to, to, to problems in the clinic. So we have built our department of nanomedicine around essentially five different uh, dominant areas. The first is multi-stage vectors. The second is uh, implants for long-term release through nanochannel. We call them nanochannel delivery systems. Then we have a nanoproteomics program. We have a program in uh, scaffolds, in nanoscaffolds for regeneration of tissue. And we have a program in microfluidics for the detection of multiple analytes. So the first two areas, one is the area of injectable particles for treating disease, in particular for reaching metastasis. We specialize in crossing biological barriers and concentrating therapeutic agents at the site of metastatic disease. The main technology uh, we use here is something called the multi-stage vector drug delivery system. Essentially, it's a drug carrier. We put the uh, cancer therapeutics into this multi-stage drug vector. This uh, vector will then send the drugs to the tumor tissues where the drugs are released from this carrier and into the uh, cancer cells. A lot of what we do is we put different proteins or things on the particle that causes them to bind with specific proteins or oxidants within the blood and that causes them to interact with different cell types. The second one that originated in my lab was the nanochannel system technology. These are implants that deliver drugs for a long term in a, in a time-controlled release fashion for weeks and months. The key, the magic ingredient in that sauce is the nanochannels that changes the dynamics of diffusion. For many treatments, for example, for chronic diseases, as well as for long-term administration of therapeutics, we replace the pills with an implantable system that can control the administration and does the work for you. And in many occasions, you can actually limit the side effects associated to the treatment. Then we have a tissue regeneration program. These are the programs where we use a combination of nanotechnology with stem cells, with drug delivery, with biomaterials, essentially to regrow. These are scaffolds, uh, they are bio nano scaffolds as we call them, and they are used for regenerating tissue. We try to tap into that uh, healing component uh, of our body by uh, using uh, uh, materials uh, and uh, delivery systems. Usually when you think at orthopedics, uh, you always think at screws, blades, rods. We got rid of all of that. And that's where the internal cast comes into place. You have that uh, shell that holds in place the two ends of the bone, and that also allows uh, the mechanical uh, reconnection of the two ends. Uh, eventually, after like a one year time, your bone will be completely remodeled, uh, your polymer completely gone, uh, and you have a bone just like you used to have. The multi-stage nanovector delivery system is primarily used for cancer applications, but I'm trying in my lab to adapt it for tissue engineering purposes, more specifically lung regeneration. The problem of lung transplant is that over 80% of all consented donor lungs are discarded, just, just thrown away, because they do not meet this high standards of, for, for the lung transplant procedure. So what we're trying to do is maybe utilize these discarded lungs decellularize them, and then recellularize them with stem cells to create a whole new living organ. The fourth program that we have is a program in proteomics, where we use nanostructure surfaces to analyze uh, uh, the molecular content of biological fluids in ways that are very facile, very quick, very cheap, 
and they give access to parts of the spectrum of molecules in the biological fluids, such as in blood, that usually are very, very difficult to get to. My group uses nanoporous silica chips um, to separate high molecular weight proteins from low molecular weight proteins, so we can look for biomarkers for several diseases. So we hope that we can uh, find some biomarkers and that we can apply our technology for um, the clinical diagnostics or for therapeutic efficacy of uh, diseases. The fifth area that we have is in the field of microfluidics and the leader of that is Li Dong Ching. Li Dong is a sensational young scientist and he has brought in his technologies developed it here, did not originate from a laboratory. So it is we're delighted that we've been able to recruit him here with us. In my hand, it's a type of uh, device. Uh, it has channels. You can read out a uh, biomarker label uh, exactly on the chip. We use these to study uh, biomarkers from human blood and uh, use this biomarker label to then to do diagnosis uh, for uh, 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 prognosis and uh, early diagnosis. We are at the frontier when it comes to research, we are at the frontier when it comes to education, and we bring nanotechnology-based solutions to our patients uh, in bigger and bigger waves.